Hey there all, welcome on into VG Emporium, video game music and more. Well here we are, episode 101, and what better way to start it off than with one of the best shop themes ever made? Well it's a chiptune arranged, but still, this is Tomato Mart, NES cover, from Shenmue, originally composed by Ryuji Uchi, and arranged by Neon Big Bird. Now you'd think this would be another shop themes episode, but um, you know, it kinda is, because, you know, this shop, um, it's... It's hard to run as one person, and I have way too much stuff going on in here, so, um, you know, I need help to keep manage things here. So that's why we're having employee appreciation. Yes, they, you know, you may not see or hear them too much, but they're there, helping me kind of, like, you know, keep order of this place, in a sense, because, you know, they each manage their own sections, but also there's kind of, like, cross-contamination of sections and things happen, but, you know, that's, that's a whole other story. You know, the most important thing, though, is that they're helping me curate all this stuff, so, hey, if I need a fighting or warrior theme type thing, I hit up Mama Chawamba. Do I need some, like, casino, swanky, some smoky jazz? I hit up Julius Valentino. And you've met these two and a few more already. Um, there are others that are kind of, that come in every once in a while, but haven't really, you know, wanted to host an episode. I'm, I'll eventually get them on here, but, you know, it takes time. So, yeah, you may not be meeting the whole staff today, but you may be meeting more of them in the future. Hopefully. For now, I was able to wrangle in a few familiar faces for you, so, um, yeah, we're gonna start bringing them in here. Starting off with this big lug right who's been, uh, sitting here uncharacteristically silently. You want to introduce yourself to the folks? Hey! Mamba! Oh! Uh, um, Mamba Chawamba! Jovial Wrestler! Warrior of the Pachuca! And the- uh, Oh! And the- uh, uh, Oh! Hey! Rage Cage! What is going on here? Employee appreciation! Don't you remember? Man, you know, I figured, you know, it's been a long while since last people have less seen or heard you, so I figured, you know, bring you in. Mmm. -hmm. Oh! 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 Mamba remembers now! Very honorable of you, Rage Cage, to bring Attention to those of us that hope to bring the magic to this wonderful Emporium! Yes, folks! BJ Emporium, the greatest shop you ever done heard this side of the Chachunga planetary system! Huh, haven't heard that one yet. It's pretty impressive. Oh, uh, wh where's the Chachunga? Honestly, Mama Chihuahua does not know. He just remembers seeing it on Ruth Goldberg's galactic planetary map thingamabobber. And Mama Chihuahua very much liked the sound of Chachunga! Rolls right up the tongue it does. Huh, it does have a nice ring to it. Does Chachunga sound like a ringing sound? Anyway, you know, I brought you in here to, uh, you know, thank you and appreciate you, but before we go any further with that, I believe you have a track for us to play from your curations? That is correct, Rage Cage! Mama Chihuahua has brought you the song of a mighty and very beautiful warrior! It, uh, <laughs> it's a very, actually, the reason why Mama Chihuahua was somewhat distracted earlier, um, so what Mama Chihuahua has brought in is Sif from Romantic Saga! Composed by one Kenji Ito. Hey there folks, uh, Mamba seems to have spaced out again. So this was Sif from Romantic Saga composed by Kenji Ito. So Mamba, why is this distracting you so much? Well, um, it's uh, well, it's not very uncommon to meet women warriors. Actually, Mamba Chwamba has met many in his time, but it is very uncommon to meet one that actually potentially outmatch him. Hmm, it's very strange for Mamba to explain 
Uh, when Mama has met other female warriors, they have just been warriors. Yes, they were very attractive, but Mama was not feeling that way towards them. But this one is different. Mama cannot explain it. Well, you know, looking at some uh, photos of her, it looks like she might actually kind of, like, you know, match you in stature and in muscle, possibly? That very well may be, but Mamba believes, now that he thinks of it, other female warriors seem to just be in it for their own personal gain. Whereas this one, Sif, she cares. She cares for the land that she calls home, using her wonderful, beautiful strength to protect those she holds dear. Uh-huh. You know, I haven't actually heard you talk about women like this before. Have you been talking with Donatello? Oh, no, 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 You see it so well in the... Oh, yes. He was talking to the quite foolish, yet genuine, Donatello Valentino. But after all the butterflies that Mama Chihuahua wrangled in the submission were out, some feelings still remain. Well, I can tell your feelings are truly honest. And, you know, hey, being a space traveler such as yourself, uh, you know, you may be able to find some way to do some reality hopping and actually go to the world where Romancing Saga happened and meet Sip herself. Who knows? Hmm. This is true. Maybe it is time for Mama Juwama to go find Rube Goldberg, Master Artificer, Insane Robot Man. He may have such a device as that. Well, I wish the best of luck to you, but hey, before I forget, you know, thank you again for rescuing me from that strange Gadrelf creature, which I can actually talk about now. I don't have any PTSD about that. I have PTSD of a screeching sort now, but I'm figuring that out. But yeah, again, thank you for that. Think nothing of it. It had Mama Chihuahua stretched the muscles he had not stretched in a long time. And he will need to stretch them even more so as he goes on this mad journey to find this beautiful warrior mistress. Which Mama hopes is okay if he takes vacation time for this. Um, he knows that it's usually a two-week notice for this, but, you know, I'm seeing it's... Hey, go for it, man. You know, follow your heart. It's not my place to hold back a mighty space warrior that's faced all kinds of weird galactic horrors that would definitely melt my mind. So many horrors Mama Chihuahua has seen and is surprised that he has come back quite intact. So thank you, Rage Cage, for allowing Mama Chihuahua to go on this great journey to find our way to travel through space-time. Though this will not be the first. So farewell, Rage Cage, and beloved customers of VG Emporium. May the next time we meet be not too long off. Now where to find Ruth Goldberg? It has been too long since Mama has seen him. Maybe Mama Chihuahua will have to contact Tarakaka the Baka Charakuga to see if he's heard any rumors or leads on Ruth. Huh. Well, that was a totally unexpected outcome. But hey, let's cheer him on, folks. I have absolutely no clue if it's possible to go into an actual living dimension that exists within a video game. But hey, uh, from the stories that Mumbo has told me about all the stuff he's done and this guy Rube Goldberg, anything may be possible. And before you ask, no, it's not that Rube Goldberg. It's just some strange robot man that has been alive for like thousands of years, I guess, that happens to be named Ro Rube Goldberg. Maybe that's... I, I don't know. What I do know is that I smell cigar smoke somewhere around here and some hint of bourbon. Oh yeah, I thought so. It's Julius Valentino. He actually came in. Hey, Julius, come on over here. Why don't you say hi to everybody and, you know, introduce yourself. Ah, oh, gosh. Well, hey there, folks. This is Julius Valentino. Uh, resident Swankmaster, as a fine proprietor seems to like calling me. And I guess I'm here to get appreciated like, you know, don't mind if I do. You know, ain't nothing like some good appreciation to add some variety into the week between uh, being at the casino and, you know, filling this shop with some fine swanky tunes. Speaking of which, folks, I got a really fine number right here that'll just certainly get you swinging. Ah, uh, uh, pardon me, Rage Cage. I seem to have taken over without even thinking about it. Hey, no need to apologize. Don't even worry about it. You know, we're here for you. Well, uh, man, I'm feeling all hoity-toity. Uh, so what I got here for you folks, it's where I'd be if I weren't here right now. This is Casino from Metarod 8, composed by Iku Mizutani, Hisako Mizutani, and Kinuyo Yamashita.
Well, folks, that swinging number that's definitely making me want to go back was Casino from Metarot 8, composed by Iku Mizutani, Hisako Mizutani, and Kinuyo Yamashita. And like I said, this little number is making me want to go back, but I tell you what, folks, it was the craziest thing. There I was, just taking my leases, enjoying my cigar and some real fine bourbon, and all of a sudden, these kids just burst in. What looked looked like even tinier kids, covered in cardboard boxes and looked kind of like beetles or something. And then these little tinier kids start beating at each other, and there's just metal clanging, the loudest thing you ever heard. Hold on, I'm putting some things together here. So this this song is from Metarots, which I know here in the States is called Metabots. So you're saying that there was actually a Metabot battle that happened in the casino you were at? I kind of find that hard to believe, but part of me wants to believe it. Hey, whether you believe it or not, that's your own problem. I know what I saw, I know what I heard. But thankfully security came and was able to clear them right out. We can't have any of that rockets kind of action going on inside a fine, clashy establishment such as that particular casino I was at. And hey, once that was all taken care of, the band started playing this nifty little number, and I just went back to enjoying my cigar and my bourbon. Well, that is a pretty cool story, at least. Well, thank you, Julius, for coming in and you know, being willing to just hang out with us for a short bit. And hey, I want to let you know, Mike Levy of XVGM Radio actually really likes you. He liked the episode you did. Really has a liking for these swanky casino tunes. Well, much obliged, Mike. Sounds like you have some really fine taste. It's always great to come across fine folks such as yourself that have appreciation for the swanky tunes, possibly even for a great cigar. Speaking of which, I usually don't like the smell of cigars, but the one that you have right there is reminding me of my grand- great-grandfather's pipe smoke, but like 10 times better. Where'd you get that? This here? Well, this is the generous gift from the boys downstairs. You know, for being some weird, creepy ghoul guys, they have an excellent, and I can't emphasize this enough, excellent selection of top class stogies. What, Bryson? Laurel? Keep his cigars down there? Uh, well, whatever, well, whatever. Hey, Julius, thank you so much for coming in and, you know, sharing this tune with us and being willing to hang out. Despite your busy schedule, I know you're only in here maybe like once or twice a week, and that changes. No problem, no problem. Always a pleasure to talk about the virtues of casino life. Nice. Cool stuff. Um, if, hey, before you go, Julius, um, I haven't seen your cousin in here for a while. If you happen to see uh, Donnie anytime soon, can you let him know I want to talk to him, possibly about, uh, you know, this upcoming Valentine's Day? Sure thing, Vosh. Hey, I'm pretty sure we'll run into each other eventually. We always do. Yeah, thanks. Well, take it easy, Julius. Until next time, keep it clashy, folks. And that was Julius Valentino, everybody. Yeah, uh, so now, but he mentioned the boys downstairs. I think it's about time I have a talk with them. Um, let me see. Hey, Bryson, Laurel, I wanna talk to you ghouls. Come on up here. Oi, hold on. Yo! What the hell's going on? One of them usually comes up when I do that. Where are they? <laughs> Did you think to look behind you? Holy crap! Oh, where the, where'd you come from? I didn't see you come up. Why? How long were you behind me? <laughs> I, I don't remember. I I came up a few hours ago and I don't remember. <laughs> oh, that's comforting. Um, well... Uh, it looks like it's just you, Bryson, I guess, isn't coming up. He's still recovering from what we did on Hall Hollow's Eve. <laughs> okay, well, um, I don't think I want to ask what you were doing to do that to him, but uh, fine. Um, I hope you got my notice about, you know, it being a employee appreciation day today. Um, did you happen to bring a track up to share with the folks? <laughs> yes, yes, I have the most wonderful music to share with the people tonight, today, tonight, what is day? <laughs> so what, what, what I brought today is something that was actually introduced to me from you. Oh, this is truly wonderful, wonderful music. <laughs> so what, what I have brought today to you is Mystery Combat from World of Horror. It's just the things that brought back so many 
Honda for memories to me. What? Oh, oh, yes, yes, the one who made this music is is Cuesta. <laughs> 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 that, that, that was Mystery Combat <laughs> from Worlds of Horror composed by Equesta. <laughs> and, 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 and yes, yes, the, the uneasing, panicky feeling this music makes one feel <laughs> so, so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're starting to make me feel a little uneasy. You know, not quite panicky yet, but almost there. But, you know, I can understand why this song has you in a bit of a frenzy, because, you know, having played the game that this music is from, it's definitely right up your alley, huh? <laughs> it's just a delightful little package. <laughs> it's just it's all, all, the, all the misfigured ones, all the creatures, and the elder gods that are ever pushing in on you. <laughs> you see, it's, it's so wonderful, perfect wonderful, bringing back Memories! <laughs> Centuries of memories! Alright, now that glassy-eyed look in your eyes is starting to make me feel kind of panicky, but... Did I just hear you say centuries? Like, as in hundreds of years? Yes, 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 uh, yes, uh, yes, I, I have met these elder gods that are shown in this game. They remind, they are very much like the ones that I have... I have encountered and their worshippers. I helped to seal one away one. That's how I came to be as I am now. <laughs> uh, Laurel, you okay? Yeah, <laughs> this, uh, this, this, this name was Sihaltinachlef. <laughs> I can't re remember. What I was before this this affliction, but I can remember. I can remember the, the and okay. <laughs> Snap out of a Laurel! I don't need you invoking the name of some <laughs> forbidden cosmic horde to just come into my shop like that. Okay, I've already had to deal with a weird Garfield wannabe like creature. That's enough for me. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a while since I've 
How to go to sleep like that? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Laurel, tell me, by saying that name, did you just happen to awaken that thing that you said you walked away centuries ago? <laughs> oh, 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 no, 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 Distorted somehow. <laughs> so no fear of it. We're awakening anytime soon. <laughs> okay, that's good. Huh. <sighs> Learned more about you than I expected. Maybe it's something I didn't want to know, but there it is nonetheless. So now Laurel, and this goes for Bryson as well. Um, I just want to thank you for you know allowing me to uh, you know stay here in the shop because you know I know the building was built on the spot where you had set your crypt up, probably who knows how many decades before the building was built, but you know, for some reason, who, the last people that were in here never opened up the basement area or went further in and found you guys. I did, and you didn't freak out. You said you were totally cool with me staying here, so thank you, thank you for that. But a little bit of that thanks is a bit retracted because, you know, if you remember last year, you summoned the ghost of that Gadderulf creature thing that I mentioned earlier. But thankfully it hasn't, like, come back to get back at me or Mumba. So, um, yeah? Oh, yes, yes. There's no worries. No worries. There's no, no problems that you store so many things down there. It's so interesting. But, oh, yes, and the, and the, the Gadrel. <laughs> we actually secretly went out to find him and found he was quite unsatisfied with his ghostly life. But we help him. Find a, a purpose. <laughs> it's, it's actually we'll say, it's a mutual friend of ours. <laughs> it's supposed to be a surprise. He's not supposed to know. I'm not supposed to know. Oh yes, yes, it's very much it's a secret. <laughs> well, we don't know how to worry about him causing any trouble because he's very the very said to him satisfied where we where we haunt him. <laughs> Let's see uh, okay, well, I guess I should be satisfied with the fact that that thing isn't out there anymore. Um, worrying about it, you know, trying to come and get me or anything. So, thank you. <laughs> yes, it's no problem. No problem. All right. So I'll let you get back to whatever it is you do down in that space of yours. Um, thank you, Laurel, for sharing with us. Um, he's not here anymore. Where'd he go? Oh, jeez. Oh, well, hey, that was interesting, folks, weren't it? Well, I think I got it in me to do one more. Um, let's see. Let's see. Who do we have in here? Uh, let's see. Scuzzy definitely won't be coming out because he's terrified of folks. GB is too busy with his house thing. Waiting for word from Julius on Donatello. So, nah, nobody else. Looks like it only leaves one person for the moment. Huh. <sighs> Well, folks, it's about to get a different sort of weird up in here and maybe somewhat uncomfortable. Yep, we're gonna bring up Sal, who runs the adults-only section in the back. Um, I wonder if he can hear me from up here. Hold on, let's see, actually. Thanks to Martyrus, I found out I have this PA system, so let's give it a shot. That was a little different. Oh, anyway, uh, attention, Sal! You are wanted up at the front of the shop. Come and bring a track, hopefully something that is not too spicy is probably the best way to put it. And before you even say it, I can't hear you from up here, so don't even say it. Just get yourself up here. Huh. Well, that was sounding very different than how it sounded when uh, Martyrs' message came through it. Um, well, I'll just roll with it. Okay. Another quirk of EG Emporium. Oh, Man, here comes great. Sal. I hope he doesn't say it, but he's, front. I know he's, he's gonna, gonna say it. It's a real treat to spend some time with the boss. Quality time with, hey, Rage Gage, hey, it's hey, me, Sal. It's me. Oh, oh. your old pal. Oh, please. Sleazy Sam. Oh, I should just accept it's inevitable every single time. I've already get this up quick. Hey, Sal, uh, how you been? I've been doing fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Been getting all kinds of wonderful stuff to fill my shelves in my shop, inside a shop, you know? My very own little sleazy emporium. Sal, no. We're not gonna call it the Sleazy Emporium. It's just the adults only section. Ah, come on, come on! It's Sleazy Emporium, it has a real nice ring to it, don't it? Come on, don't kid it, kid it, huh? You know you'll like it deep down, yeah! I'm gonna stop you right there. I did not bring you up to have this conversation. 
What did you bring from the adults only section? Ah, whatever. You'll come around to it eventually. Yeah. So what did Sal bring from his little den of debauchery? So glad you asked. It's called Running Not from a fun little romp called Viper GTS. And this is uh, done by a guy that's, uh, hold on, let me see right here. This is, uh, Kenichi Arakawa. Yeah. Running Knot from Viper GTS by Kenichi Arakawa. And I do have to say that is a pretty damn good track. I knew you were gonna love it. That's why your old pal Sal brought it up. Yeah, as soon as I got it in, I was like, hey, Rage Cage, this is something that he's gonna like for sure. Yeah. I will admit, Sal, that, you know, as much as I may seem quite annoyed with your presence and maybe not quite like you, there's a reason why you're running the adults only section, and that's because, you know, you definitely know how to pick them. Because though even though you stock in there really raunchy, possibly questionable stuff, a lot of it has just amazing music, which it just kind of baffles the mind sometimes. Absolutely. And hey, I know you told me nothing too spicy, but hey, it's kind of hard to do when you're surrounded by such great smut as I am. Then I guess that begs the question, how spicy is this? So glad you asked. All right, better sit your ass down because this one's going to be a long one. All right, so yeah, there's this long series called Viper, which as far as I know, there's 17 of them. I don't have them all yet, but I'm working on it. But getting back to this Viper GTS, it's a sequel to a scenario in the first one, Viper V6, called The Devil Came. Eh? Came? It, it, that's a good one, eh? Oh, come on, loosen up in here. Ah, but anyway, hey, in this first one, you know, it's about this guy who summons a demon and they start bumping uglies, I tell you what! And then in this one, Viper GTS, the same guy summons the same demon. But this time she brought a friend along and they get into doing all kinds of wild sh**. And then if that crazy threesome weren't enough, 
An angel gets in on it. And that's all Sal's gonna tell you. Cause you know, hey, you gotta come in and rent yourself if you wanna know what actually happens. Hey, you know, it's all kinds of fun, fun kind of stuff going on there. A lot of good humor. And I'll leave it at that. Well, I'll say that was definitely colorful. Uh, thank you, Sal, for coming up and sharing that with us. Hey, don't mention it. No problem. It's just a good time to come up here and stretch the old legs and see the sunlight. Yeah, it's pretty great. Hey, you know, hey, I'm sorry that, you know, that you can't stick around here for too long. No worries. You know, I got to get back there anyway because, uh, you know, I got all kinds of new inventory and I got to sort out and put up on the shelves and get it ready for folks that want to come on in and visit old sleazy Sal. Speaking of which, hey, uh, you know, when's the next time I can uh, host one of these things, you know? Share what I got with these fine customers? Uh, we'll figure that one out another time, okay? Sounds good, sounds good. Hey, uh, thanks again, boss, for having me up here. Yeah, and hey, folks, good seeing you again. And remember, some come on back to the Sleazy Emporium. And, uh, you know, come and say hi to your old pal, Sleazy Sam. And there he goes, folks, our very own, I believe the term is a rogue master. That's the official title we have on the books. But uh, I don't know. You know, he's, he's the only one that was really enthusiastic about actually running that section and keeping everything contained inside the one room. You know, it's better than having to put it up on the high shelves where most people won't see it. And those that do want to see it have to kind of struggle to get it. So, you know, it's a necessary thing. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed meeting some of the employees slash curators. So not which one, sure which one to settle on. But uh, yeah, you got to meet some of them. Not all of them, obviously. But, you know, you will eventually. Because, you know, I kind of lost track of things. And, you know, I didn't realize I was just working so hard on all these. That, you know, I kind of do need to take a break every once in a while. So hopefully, you know, more uh, employee-hosted episodes will be happening off more often. It's all about scheduling. So thank you all for coming into VG Emporium, video game music and more. And if this is your first time in, uh, it's definitely an interesting way to start things off. But, um, yeah, hey, you can find VG Emporium on all your favorite podcatchers, such as Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Google. And if you want to try something new, there is TerraPlayer, which is an ever-growing hub for all kinds of video game podcasts. And, of course, there is the website, vgemporium.wordpress.com. And then you can find VG Emporium on all the different social media, such as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then there is a Discord, if you're interested in that. That would be in the show notes. Now, it's hard to believe, but we're already at December, end of the year. It's crazy, huh? Now here's something that hasn't happened for a while. I actually know what's going to be happening for the next three weeks. So next week, got more shop themes coming. The week after that, have an episode that's related to a couple birthdays. And then the third week, it'll be a few days before Christmas. So that obviously means I'm going to be doing a Christmas theme episode again. And then going into the new year, I'm hoping to have a couple guest episodes that have already been recorded, edited, and ready to go. So that's pretty exciting. And so with that, I'd like to thank you all. Wait a minute, what's this? Hold on. A note? Wait, that wasn't there before. Hold on. It's from Scuzzy. Wait, what did he put this up here? I didn't see him come up here. What the? Ah. Anyway, let's see what it says. It says, uh, here's the song, Masty Shopping, from No More Heroes 2, composed by Jun Fukuda. You're welcome. Scuzzy! Scuzzy! I know you're in here. I know you're in here somewhere. You're, you're going to have to talk to folks again. You did it before. You can do it again. Oh, boy. Uh, last time us to give him the heebie-jeebies big time. Well, if you're confused about this, uh, Scuzzy is our guy that handles a lot of like the super shreddy heavy stuff. Um, he is very much uh, anxious, terrified about people, I guess, is probably the best way to put it. And it was a total miracle I was able to get him to co-host an episode. That would be episode 9, FM Face Melters. Um, but yeah, maybe somehow I'll be able to coerce him to, you know, talk to folks again soon. I don't know, but anyway, he, the track that he left us with to close out the show with is Mass De Shopping from No More Heroes 2, composed by Jun Fukuda, which is very much appropriate because we're going to be going into uh, more shop themes next week. 